Next and they're falling back all the way. In today's video, I'm going to try and do the hardest thing ever, which is describe what combat feels like. Specifically, artillery, bombs, right? First time I was bombed was not in Ukraine, it was in Iraq. I was sitting with uh, one of the younger dudes in my unit with people, Kurds, that we didn't know and understand, right? So he didn't know the language, he didn't know these people too well, he wasn't there as long as I was. Now he's being bombed with them oh, shit. in a room, having to trust them, right? And as soon as the first close bomb came in, the window curtains flew up like this. Uh, I saw this video, it doesn't have any audio for some reason, but it's from Ukraine, from Bakhmut, and that's exactly what it looked like. Uh, the drapes had flown up into my face, big old boom, sounded like hell was coming to earth. As soon as that happened, he looks up to me, with wide eyes, and he tells me, I want to go home. I don't like this, I want to go home. And a couple more bombs happened after that, uh, some bigger ones, some closer ones, but that's pretty much the gist of it. He wanted to go home, he hated that shit. And then we went to Ukraine together, and he's still there, all right? I'm taking a break right now, I'm gonna be back in Ukraine probably a month. He's still there, and he's, uh, he seems to be enjoying life. Just and I'm know. wondering, how is how can that be? That's the correct response to artillery a lot of times. I hate this, I don't like this, I wanna get out of here, this, this sucks. But for him to be able to go to Ukraine after that, like literally just a week after that event, and still be there and be able to stay calm, that's very interesting to me. And it should be uh, to you as well. And what I think that story entails is it's all about trust. And it's not just artillery, but it's about trust in your command. And I want to have a proper METTC, mission planning, before I go out on a mission. If I get artillery and I don't have a plan for what to do, you know, that, that's not good. But with artillery, at the end of the day, there is no METTC. There's nothing except a reaction, a react to contact. And that's all you can do. You just lay down in the dirt, try and get some cover, and you wait. And sometimes that react to contact is just sit down, sit down, sit down. and take yeah. deep breaths and pray that it doesn't hit you. I remember, for instance, when I was younger, I would tell myself I wouldn't be like the movies, right? Like the person who's going out there and he's fighting back and when artillery's happening, he's not going to the ground. I, I told myself I wouldn't be like that. Anytime that I heard any shot or anything, I wouldn't care what other people feel about me. I would hit the dirt, I would, I would cover my head and anytime shots would go out, I would make sure to take as much cover as possible and I wouldn't care what people thought about me. But the reality is this, you are human. And humans are embarrassed. They're anxious. They think about others more than themselves a lot of times. In my favorite book ever, The Things They Carried, I mean, I've spoken about this book before, they speak on this perfectly. They say that the soldier is more scared of embarrassment than he is of dying. Embarrassment is more important to humans in yourself than you think. So in reality, you try your best to not be the only guy laying down diving for cover. And I'll tell you, Sean, I don't think I've ever been as scared in my life. Those things whistling through the air. And the difference, like when you get shot at, it happens so fast, you don't really have time to be scared, right? But with the, with when mortar rounds incoming, like, and you can hear those things whistling for five, six seconds in the air, the whole time you're thinking, is this it? Artillery is different. The concussion rips through you. It goes through the drapes and it hits you in the face and boom! The sound is deafening. Your ears are gonna ring. In a split second, the shrapnel has already hit its target. And even if you're behind that hill, oh, it could shit. still very likely kill you. If it hits behind the hill, the shrapnel can kill you from 50 meters away from the impact. The same goes for if you run into a house, or a city, or a trench. The shrapnel sprays everywhere, and you start looking to the sky wondering if there's a drone guiding it in. It's really, really a helpless feeling. And as soon as one guy gets hit, chaos can take over so easily. And I've seen it. As soon as the first guy gets hit, you're, you're freaking, you're toast. If you don't have the confidence, if you don't have the ability to go and like, brush it off and like, continue the mission, have trust in your leadership, trust in the plan, as soon as the first guy goes down, like you're, there's something going on in your head. It, it's very hard to explain, but I'm gonna continue to try. Uh, back to Iraq, it was really crazy. Uh, we had this police station about 200 meters away. Oh, uh, the bomb hit it. As we're radioing them, we're talking to them. The Kurds are talking to them. I can barely understand what they're saying over the radio, but the Kurds, I can understand what they're saying. They're, they're asking, are you okay? Is everything okay? Like we hear bombs, we don't know if it's hitting you guys. And they're like, I don't know, like, you know, I, I'm not sure we're gonna go down to the basement. And as soon as it exploded, the concrete started raining down in front of our house. Um, I could only tell from the sound and the drape that rubbed on my face again, but the radio went silent. And then at that point, you only have two options. You can panic, run out to the street, the drone bombs you, or you can stay put and pray. There's nothing. As soon as the bombs come in, it's gonna go slow motion. It feels like slow motion. You're, you're feeling every millisecond waiting for that round to impact. You can hear for maybe five, six seconds if it's a mortar. You can hear for like a full second before it hits you if it's a tank or artillery. Um, 
you hear so, the booms in the distance and you know, oh, that's for me. So even 20 seconds ahead of time, you, you know that it's coming. Do you have a girlfriend? Is your family on your mind? Do you have a kid? All these things will pop into your brain. Just like a lot of people, they say that when they're in a life or death situation, they have their life flash before their eyes. They see their wife, they see their kids, they yell for mom, you know? This is real, it's real. If you have something else in the back of your mind, it's now the forefront. And for the rest of that battle, you're gonna be thinking about that, all right? It comes to mind in, in vicious ways. And going into combat in general is crazy because you never know when you're gonna get into it. The most recent school shootings show this amazingly. This officer was having a normal kind of lazy day and he said 10 circumstances he can't explain added up to put him in that position to run into that school and have to rush and kill that active shooter. When you're a soldier, you have a life outside of combat. Combat is probably like less than a percent of your time, even if you're combat deployed. The other years of time are spent as a normal job for the most part. And you develop friendships and passions and get a girlfriend and you go on leave to see your family. Artillery and combat rips all that to shreds right before your eyes as you face down eternity, there's no time for anything, just the now. You just lay down, you cover your neck, and you hear the artillery come. All ready, and then after the barrage, you're so thankful to be alive. But the work doesn't stop because someone is hit, or someone is panicking. Oftentimes after barrage, everyone gets silent. You can see that in a lot of my videos, or a lot of the videos that I post. After barrage, it's just, you can't hear anything in the barrage anyway. It's so deafening, it's so loud, it's so, your mind is, in the military we call it internal. Uh, that means like when stuff is happening, when you're really tired from a hike or whatever, you go internal. You stop speaking, you just think about yourself, you think about your family, you think about whatever. Anything other than what's happening to you right there. It feels too real. Too real to explain. You think it'll be like a movie, like Saving Private Ryan, or by watching videos or hearing me say this, you'll get it. And I want you to get it so bad. I know. I used to read exclusively autobiographies from combat veterans when I was a kid. Like all throughout my childhood, up to 18 years old when I left for boot camp, I would only read autobiographies because I wanted to know so bad. Just tell me, somebody explain it to me. But even reading all those books, it doesn't explain, you know? It's, it's an experience, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. I remember one time I, I was laying down, about 12 explosions later, they're really, really close. I look to my right as I'm laying down and I'm, I'm looking across this trench and I realize this is, like nothing has changed. It's not like the world is brighter. It, it's just so dark and muggy. The, the colors aren't vivid. The world isn't bright. There's bugs crawling around, and flying, and it smells like gunpowder. There's no music like the movies. There's nothing but the sound of someone yelling on the radio at you. It's just so random, you know? You hear the whistles, you get down, it blows up, and nothing changes. It's not like, oh, you know, like it's bright and sunny like it is right now where I'm sweating. It's just normal. It's just too normal. The sky is blue like normal, the ground is brown like usual. It's just so ordinary, and that's what makes it so real. Explosions are less intense than you think. There's no fireball, there's nothing to see but some dirt being thrown up and smoke where, smoke where it landed, you know? It's, it's pretty lackluster, but it's just so dangerous and it's, it's loud. The shrapnel hits its place in a split second. It's already where physics decided it would be. And that's, that's what I want to say about that, all right? This is something I actually wrote down at like 5 a.m. a couple days ago because I just couldn't sleep. And I, you know, this is something I, I've been wanting to go and talk about for a while. So yeah, that's artillery. That's all I want to say about it. I tried my best. All right, talk to you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh my God. So that should be it, right? Be for that, not your car. All good. <laughs>